The mountain river flows 230 miles through remote wilderness from its headwaters in the heart of the Mackenzie Mountains to its confluence with the Mackenzie River in Canada's Northwest Territories. It is a fast-moving river, dropping over 3,900 feet, with plenty of large volume Class II and Class III rapids, and running through six stunning canyons. Many river guides consider this to be the most coveted wilderness whitewater trip in Canada. This is Tom, Andrew, and myself. The three of us are going to paddle 180 miles on the mountain river in pack rafts, and then continue another 45 miles down the Mackenzie River to the community of Fort Good Hope. Over our 15-day journey, we paddle through spectacular mountain scenery, hike up adjacent hills, and meet the local wildlife. Thanks for joining us. Our adventure begins with a bush plane ride from Norman Wells to tiny Dusty Lake at an altitude of 4,000 feet deep in the Mackenzie Mountains. After a short portage through the brush, we inflate our pack rafts and begin our journey on the mountain river. The river starts off pretty muddy, but right away we are immersed in interesting geology, bathed in warm, low-angle Arctic sunlight, and greeted by rainbows. After a quick 8.7 miles of paddling, we set up our first camp on a gravel bar. As with most of our campsites, this one was covered with the tracks of moose, caribou, grizzly bear, and wolves, all great signs of wild mountain wilderness. On the opposite side of the river from our camp, there is an extensive network of beaver dams. So we start day two by crossing the river on our still empty pack rafts and bushwhacking our way to the ponds. After pushing our way through narrow feeder creeks, we finally reach the first real ponds. Then it's dam crossing after dam crossing as we explore the pond network. Here we find an old hunting camp with many caribou and moose antlers laying about. Finally, we pack our boats and proceed down the mountain river. These upper stretches of the river are mostly class one and class two, and our travel speeds average about 5.4 miles per hour. We encounter this cool little canyon, which isn't one of the official six canyons. Andrew spots a grizzly bear turning over boulders on the side of the river. Being upwind from us and foraging next to a noisy river, the bear doesn't know that we are there. So we land well upstream on the opposite shore to make some photographs. Okay. After 13 miles of paddling, we take out, set up camp, and cook up a loaf of bread. We start off day three with a quick hike through tussock grass to the top of a nearby knob. This is a great opportunity to test how Andrew's broken foot is healing and to get a good view of the surrounding landscape. After our morning hike, it's back on the river where our first order of business is Canyon 1. This proves to be really easy, with nothing more than Class 2 water with some undercut cliffs, moderate boils, and small whirlpools. All pretty easy to negotiate in pack rafts. Then it's back to about 20 miles of paddling 
through the scenic mountains with autumn colors just starting to emerge. However, we do run into some more wildlife excitement. Uh, we were just pack rafting down the mountain river about 20 feet off uh, shore on river right. And there's these, it's all boreal forest along the side of the river. Tom's about 50 meters in front of me, Andrew about 75 meters behind. Just paddling along and suddenly, right on my right hand side from the bluff of the river, I hear this, Phew! but a lot more like slobbery and snotty and, and uh, angry and really deep and loud. And so I, I turn to the right and there's a grizzly bear right there on the side of the river, 20 feet away. Now, I'm in my pack raft, so my eyes are about like two and a half feet off the water. And this bank on river right was also about two and a half feet off the, off the water. So not only am I seeing this grizzly bear just 20 feet away, but he's like towering over me at the same time. <laughs> Our goal for day four is to reach Cache Creek, located right at the entrance of Canyon 2. But with fast class one and two rapids and the beautifully motivating mountain scenery, we quickly cover the 29 miles with an average moving speed of 6.4 miles per hour. Cache Creek is a beautifully clear creek dumping into the mountain river right at the start of Canyon 2. We drag our boats 100 yards up Cache Creek and set up our camp alongside. Cache Creek is so beautiful that we decided to take a layover day here. Andrew and Tom hike up to a knob. We're crossing Cache Creek. Hoping to go up that little woody gully there and then traverse the bench over to that knob in the distance. You can barely see there. A pair of caribou in the rain the bench above Cache Creek They're deciding what to do about us we were headed right for each other meanwhile I explore the nearby mineral springs that plunge right into the mountain river So far, we have covered the upper 73 miles of the mountain river from Dusty Lake to Canyon 2. Our goal for day 6 is to pass through both Canyon 2 and Canyon 3 and camp at the Stone Knife River. Andrew starts things off by dropping down the last 100 yards of Cache Creek right into the mountain river. And with that, we are on our way into Canyon 2. Overall, Canyon 2 is spectacularly scenic, with mostly Class 2 whitewater. Its main features include undercut cliffs, moderate boils, curling waves, and fairly strong eddy lines. The final short rapid offers what might be a class 3 wave. With Canyon 2 behind us, the mountain river cuts through the spectacular shattered mountain range over its next 10 miles. 
The river maintains its swift pace with near continuous class one and class two rapids. In some stretches, we reach speeds of over 12 miles per hour. After penetrating through the shattered range, we find the crystal clear Etagachali Creek, though I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right. The creek is so beautiful that we just have to stop for a closer look. We continue down the river towards Canyon 3. Andrew spots a woodland caribou on the gravel bar. In a couple of more miles, we arrive at Canyon 3, its entrance marked by Battleship Rock towering overhead. Canyon 3 is pretty simple, again with undercut cliffs, some boils, and a few class 2 rapids. Finally, the Stone Knife River comes in on river left. Its beautiful clear waters make this a great place to camp for the night. Today we take another break from the river and hike up one of the local unnamed mountains. We start with a hike of several hundred yards up the Stone Knife River for a quick crossing. Then it's up through scrubby forest to the base of the mountain. At the 4,000 foot summit, we find great views back up the mountain river and down to Canyon 3. Meanwhile, a dust storm is kicking up at camp, and we end up relocating our tents to a more protected area in the bushes. Today is about making river miles. Unfortunately, much of it against a cold headwind. The river surfs up more class two and class three rapids. After 19 miles, we set up camp on a nondescript gravel bar just upstream of Canyon 4. One of our key daily camp chores is recharging our electronics with our solar chargers. I have a whole series of videos on how to size a solar charging system for long wilderness adventures, including selection of solar cells, battery banks, and other accessories. You can find a link to these videos down in the description below. The last video in this series includes data from this trip demonstrating the actual performance of the solar charging system I used. After taking a layover day to hike up the local ridges and to try some fishing, we're back on the river. Canyon 4, which is probably the most difficult of the six canyons, is only one mile downstream.
the river is so steep here that you can actually see it dropping away downstream. Fast currents push up against vertical cliffs to generate strong curling waves. Like this one here that throws Andrew out of his boat. These boats can be a real challenge to turn back upright when they're loaded down with two weeks of camping gear. So Tom and I come in to lend a hand. The river continues for another 14 miles, cutting its way through the canyon range. The fast current keeps us moving right along with an average speed of 7.3 miles per hour for the day. Finally, we arrive at Canyon 5 with more Class 2 and Class 3 action. Here, we reach our peak speed for the trip of 13.6 miles per hour. At the final turn of the canyon, we land and set up our camp for the night. With Canyon 5 now behind us, the mountain river becomes much more braided on its final 53 miles across foothills and flatlands on its way to the Mackenzie River. But the river generally remains fast, still with plenty of Class 1 and Class 2 rapids along the way. Midway to the Mackenzie, we encounter Canyon 6, which penetrates through the Imperial Hills. The waters here are pretty tame, just some more rapids and boils along some pretty impressive cliff faces. Shortly after Canyon 6, we find Gaina Hot Springs and set up camp here for the night. Our second day on the flats is sunny and comfortable. We make good time to reach our final camp on the mountain river. We can now see East Peak on the horizon, which we know is just on the other side of the Mackenzie. Finally, we paddle our last strokes on the mountain river as we approach the Mackenzie. Here we take a break to celebrate completion of our 12-day, 183-mile adventure on the Mountain River. We now have just 45 miles of paddling left to the end of our trip in the village of Fort Good Hope. But the first thing to deal with on the Mackenzie are the sand salt rapids, which span the river just downstream of here. We follow the buoys marking the shipping channel, reaching speeds near 8 miles per hour. Our plan for avoiding troublesome black bears on the Mackenzie is to only camp one night on the river and to make that camp on one of its islands far from shore. Of course, the first thing we find on our island camp are bear tracks everywhere, so maybe our plan isn't all that great after all. So we deploy our regular procedure of stacking our bear-resistant food containers 
and placing a motion activated alarm on top to wake us up in case of tampering. First thing the next morning, we find a bear swimming across the channel to one of the islands. Our final rapid on the Mackenzie are the rampart rapids. Here, the navigation markers and buoys guide us down the shipping channel, where, where we reach speeds of nine miles per hour. Below the rampart rapids, the river funnels down through the beautiful ramparts. These cliffs run for seven miles along both sides of the river. Fort Good Hope finally comes into view and the end of our paddling adventure comes near. The people of Fort Good Hope are super welcoming and we are invited to set up camp in the park across from the church. We spend the next day drying out our gear, walking around town, getting to know some of the people and having a tour of the historic Our Lady of Good Hope Church. So we say thank you to the people of Fort Good Hope for welcoming us, for sharing your stories about life in and around Fort Good Hope, and for getting us to the airport on time. Your hospitality and your stories are a highlight of our adventure. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you on the next adventure.